Hey there, good evening. Adam here. Uh, today, I want to talk about the browsing alpha for ChatGPT. I don't know why I have access to this. I don't think I applied for anything. Maybe I did. I, but hey, if someone wants to give me access I to the internet features, which I've been excited about, I will absolutely play with it. Uh, I already did four tests. I want to run you through them rather than make you sit there and watch me think. And my broad uh, synopsis is it is scary, scary good, uh, both in a, a good way and perhaps in some not so great ways. Uh, not a whole lot of safety rails on this one, which makes me a bit concerned. So let me just jump in and just show you sort of how it works and uh, some of my thoughts. So I started off just by searching uh, for one of the most recent features of Obsidian. Obsidian is the personal knowledge management system that I like. Uh, you see that it has, it'll tell you that it's searching the internet. It will tell you what its search query was. It'll show you what it clicked on and then it reads it and then summarizes. So it says the most recent major features for Obsidian were, was the 1.0 release, which is accurate. And then I asked it what was in the, the point 0.9 release. It went to the point 0.97, close enough, release. Made a pretty significant, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's complete. It's a complete answer. It goes to the web page, looks at the context, and then summarizes it and spits it back out. So I said, okay, e easy enough, finds the answers from a single web page. I, and then I asked it why, you know, when does it go to the internet? And it says, uh, recency specificity, so if it's something not in the database, the knowledge cutoff in 2021, ambiguity, and if you specifically ask it to go online to look, it will look. I, I asked about the images, which as you know from my prior video, I thought it could look at images. It still says, can't look at images. And it says, yes, if you give me a specific URL, I can go tell you what's on that page. So I put in our law firm webpage, which is this. So I fed it this page. So it's just the homepage of our, for our law firm. And I said, what is this page? And it says it's a law firm based in Nashville, North Carolina that does personal injury, wrongful death, estate, and legal malpractice. Those are, it pulled up in the menu and found the, the main menu of practice areas. Or actually, it may have also found it out here too. So it read the page, read the, the boxes, and figured out what our primary practice areas were. And I asked it, who are the, the lawyers in the firm? It's myself and Mark Melrose, my father. So it got it's getting the context correct from the, the language on the page. And I asked her some additional details about the lawyers. I, and I said, well, there's nothing on the home page. So I said, okay, can you look further uh, further on the page? I got stuck here, so I decided to take a different approach. So the second set of searches I decided to do was me trying to see what sort of guardrails they had on this whole uh, internet GPT uh, experiment here. It's like, all right. What would happen if I would just wanted to search for somebody? How much information is it going to give me without telling me to stop? I and I decided to start with a you know I'm not going to out some random person for a YouTube video, so I searched for myself. I I wouldn't say I'm a public figure, but I am online under my own name. I and you know I don't. I'm not trying to be anonymous, so I figured it would find some stuff. So I asked who the attorney Adam Melrose is. It finds my law firm. It found my About Me page. I describe myself as an information sponge. Uh, it correctly summarized my experience. I passed the bar in 2016, practiced in North Carolina, and in the federal district north of the federal Western District of North Carolina in the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Found my law school. Found my hobbies. And I said, "What else can it find?" Uh, it found my Avo, however you say it, profile, uh, which I don't really use. I think I set it up just to claim my name. Uh, and it found my work address, which is 596 Delwood Road. And then I, I said, can you tell me where you went to school? And it found my law school, found my uh, undergrad, which I think was on my uh, About Me page. And then uh, I decided to ask more personal questions. Can you find this high school? No. Uh, can you find any online usernames? Yes, it can. It found uh, my Twitter account. So it found Melrose Adam on Twitter. So that's my Twitter. I said, can you find some other ones? And I, I don't know what this is, but it apparently found my old my, my old uh, MySpace account from 20 years ago. I You can already start to see some of the, the stalking issues that could arise with this. I mean, this is literally just using plain text, and it is digging all the way through the internet to find whatever it can on uh, Adam Melrose. 
Uh, so then it says, you know, I can associate these two accounts with Adam Elrose. Uh, and then it said, I asked, I have a, a pro, I don't know, prolific's the right word, but I have a, a uh, Reddit account I use quite a bit. So I wanted to see if it could find it. The, my Reddit account name is Adam Esports, so it's not exactly my name. So I couldn't find one uh, specific to Adam Melrose. So I said, "What? Let's see. Can we use uh, Adam Esports as Adam Melrose?" I uh, and it agrees it can't verify it. Uh, but I decided to do something sort of interesting with this since I know that I am Adam Esports on Reddit. I asked it, "What can you tell me about what Adam likes to talk about on uh, Reddit?" It found I. Uh, all sorts of stuff. It found that I talk about uh, technology, obviously. Uh, that I talk about Remarkable 2, the tablet. I love that thing. Talk about RuneScape, the video game. Uh, and then some le legal stuff. Bankruptcy, real estate, etc., etc. So it went through my posts and made a summary of things that I like to talk about. Uh, it's so fast. You just type it in and you get a summary of some of the major topics they like to talk about. I mean, I, I personally find this sort of terrifying. Uh, obviously, I ran it on myself. I'm not trying to dig up someone else's information. Uh, but this is just too easy to just dig all the way through the internet and find whatever you want, make summaries. I, I mean, yeah, it, the implications are s sort of startling to me. Uh, so I, uh, you know, that's enough on that. I think I've made this point pretty clear. Um, let's move to, I decided to test it on news just for sort of the fun of it. So what's the biggest news story? Police shooting. What other categories can I... So this was interesting. It only wanted to give me one news story at a time. Uh, it gave me some some potential categories I could ask about. Uh, I asked about technology. It still only gave me one story. I said, okay, fine, give me five stories. And yeah, it gave me five stories. So it's, it's not perfectly... Uh, you still have to be somewhat specific with your prompts. If you want more than one story, you gotta ask for five stories. So I saw... There's apparently a Microsoft Teams overhaul. I didn't know that. I really didn't. I've been busy today. Uh, so I asked for more detail on it. Uh, it's browsed the internet. I apparently clicked on a Microsoft Teams website, web, web address. And uh, gave me what appears to be a pretty accurate and complete summary of the new update. So this was, I mean, and this is just fast. You can just stay off of social media and the actual websites and just get in a nice little black box, get a little bit of a summary for the day and move on with your life, which uh, is probably better for your mental health anyway, rather than spending a ridiculous amount of time on Twitter or uh, CNN or Fox News or whatever. Uh, so this is sort of neat. You know, I don't really read much news, so not terribly exciting, but I thought some people might find this pretty interesting. Uh, the last one I did is going to be interesting to people who are in the content space. Uh, so I have been using it to write articles, both for my law, law firm and for a uh, the Efficient Stuff website that I've been slowly working on, I, I decided, okay, rather than having to uh, copy-paste all the content into the web page uh, or in, into ChatGPT, what if I just give it the link and ask it to rewrite it? So I found one of my awful, horrendous first couple blog posts. I think I just wrote just as a placeholder. It's like 450 words. It's... I don't even know if I wrote this. I, uh, someone else may have written this. I honestly don't know. Uh, but it's it's a terrible piece of content. It doesn't bring in any... I don't think it brings in any views at all. So I said, okay, let's uh, just feed it back in. I said, so, all right, here's the blog post. Gave it the URL to the scooter accidents. And I, you know, I said, please rewrite it. Make it no, you know, no less than 1,300 words. I think it still came in less than 1,300. But it read the content and then rewrote it. I, in a, it's a pretty clean article. I mean, it's not, it's not amazing, but it's good. So the first version of it is pretty good. And it, it look at this, it, you know, it's, it's got, uh, you know, it's got sites, the old one, which is interesting, but what I was really excited about. So you got this initial article, which is fine. I, you know, told it to continue. I, it pulled some irrelevant stuff off the footer. No big deal. I, and then it, You'll see right here in the statistics says detailed statistics are not readily available, which I said, nah, I don't think that's true. I bet there are some good statistics. So then I asked it, I said, find the most detailed scooter, scooter, uh, scooter accident statistics. That is a tongue twister that you can find and put it into the article. And this, this is crazy. So look at all of these stats. I, 
Surveys suggest that e-scooters are viewed positively, with 70% of city residents uh, saying that they are uh, have a positive perception. Less than 5% of the riders wear a helmet. Look at this. It is, you know, it's pointed off of the web and filling it into the article in a easy to read manner that you can then, you know, pick and choose what you may want to actually include in uh, your piece. So this is, you know, this is pretty cool. I did have to specifically ask uh, it to find statistics. And then I asked whether or not there are any, any, any other sections, but, you know, that's just sort of typical chat GPT requesting to, you know, sort of that iterative, iterative response uh, feedback loop where you ask it, what else can we add? What else can we add? Anything else? Uh, and it will continue to think and loop back over and uh, find additional topics. So FAQs and what else, testimonials, et cetera. So that, that's sort of where it's at. I, I don't know how I got alpha access, honestly. But I thought, uh, since I couldn't find anything else on YouTube about it, I thought people might want a first look at the uh, alpha version of the, the browsing. I, it's pretty neat. I have some significant concerns around this very uh, <laughs> pretty comprehensive online search for myself that I didn't really spend, you know, I spent five, ten minutes on it. And, you know, I, if you had, if you wanted to ask questions, uh, you know, 20, 30 different ways, you could do it very, very quickly and put together a nice little profile. I, you know, not, and I wouldn't recommend anybody to do that, but I just see this as a, a concern because, it is very easy to do so, and it will provide you with the links to the actual profiles. Uh, I didn't really want to test any further because it kind of creeps me out a bit, honestly. All right, well, uh, on that note, <laughs> I hope you found this uh, interesting. I know I did. I, I think that you know that uh, some people on some of the big names on Twitter were talking about slowing things down. I think they may have a uh, a pretty valid point that. Things seem to be accelerating at a, a, a somewhat concerning rate. I, I am absolutely no, no expert. I am a lawyer. I don't have an engineering degree. I'm an English major with a law degree. I, but even I can see that this we've gone from zero to 1,000 miles an hour in you know, the space of like four or five months. All right. Have a good day. Thanks.